Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and this is one of my first projects that I ever did. Electric guitars got me into electronics and in this video we're gonna explore the possibilities of making your own tube distortion pedal. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Not all of you out there may have played the guitar before or have seen those foot pedals that a lot of guitarists have near their feet when they perform. These are effects pedals. So all of these contain effects to alter the sound of a guitar. And these are great DIY projects. You can build a lot of those at home. Usually on the inside they look like this. Some transistors, some passives and some potentiometers that form an effect. This is basically a distortion effect, like in this foot pedal, but DIY. And there is another type of foot pedals that you could build yourself, but they are a much more intricate and a bit more expensive tube based ones and you would want to have a tube based effect pedal when you want to get the real tube sound. Before we get right into the project itself we need to talk about the basics. So in the early days of electric guitars there were no dedicated guitar amps or amplifiers. You would need a way to amplify the sound of your guitar to make it hearable for people. And what people did back then was use radios, like this tube radio over here. This tube radio is pretty old, I have got it from a viewer, repaired it, and I have added this little box that allows me to plug a guitar into it. That project was, I think, five years ago, and that is pretty much the last time I have touched an electric guitar. What this allows me is to play my guitar through that radio. It takes a little while to warm up the tubes and then we can hear how it sounds. I have plugged my guitar right into the radio and this is the clean sound that it produces. I'm a very bad guitar player, you have to know that. I soon realized that I'm much better at building these things than actually playing them. So excuse my crudeness, I also haven't played for about five years. Yeah, that's the clean sound. But what happens when I get the volume up to 11 or to maximum? To 11. As you heard, the sound is now distorted. That happens because the tubes are overwhelmed by the input signal or by the game. The amplification is too high and the tubes can't produce a clean signal anymore. They induce noise and they distort. And people kind of like that effect. And then this little fa uh, phase happened uh, called rock and roll. Didn't last very long, only the last 50 years or so. And people derived a lot of different styles of music from them. Rock and roll, rock, metal, you know, these things that happened. Yeah, and then people did that on purpose and they built dedicated amplifiers for that effect. Real guitar amplifiers that could handle that and produce better, more powerful sound with distortion effects and with other effects. And what we are building today is a completely tube-based distortion effect that I can plug in here to give this better sound, but also to get the typical warm tube fuzz sound with my normal guitar amplifier that is transistor-based. So when I started building guitars, I soon built not just one, but many. I gave them away. I built guitar effects pedals and for you, you might want to do the same. So if you build one effect, you might want to build more of those. And I thought, hey, there is no real system that everybody could use to combine effects and to be creative with that. Uh, I want to make like a modular system for these effects pedals uh, based on the designs that people use for synthesizers, where they have 
like a standard rack mount size and they put the electronics behind that and they would fit into any synthesizer. So everybody could recreate that and plug it into their own system without worries. So let's design a thing, I call it module caster. We are basing it off the Mitsumin Wealth caster, which is a tried and true proven design for low voltage tube distortion that has this warm, fuzzy uh, rock and roll type of sound. And because just rock and roll isn't my sort of jazz, maybe you have just noticed from my weird guitar, I decided to make not one, but three of those, put them in cascade and make them be compatible with a wide range of different tubes so you can swap around the tubes and create different sounds and then force that into another effect and get more distortion and more and more and more and make it sound pretty cool. Let's get started with the PCB design. I have made up a little sketch on how I would like the system to work. So we have a central uh, PCB and two places for potes and a cutout in the middle. So this should accommodate most of the designs that use one tube or would use transistors. And usually the most effects have two potes that actually influence the sound and the third one for volume. So volume is just a master control basically. So I didn't put that in the design. You can place that wherever you want, but that's the base shape that should work for all of my future designs. And we're starting with a valve based distortion. Welcome to my computer and to KiCad. This is the schematic of our project. And what we do with that is we bring that into a PCB form like so. This is where the tube plugs in. You can see it's just one tube. It has two triads inside, but it's physically one tube. And here we have all the little passives on there. So it's very small. This is our voltage regulator. And we have a little cap that is in reality mounted on the back side to not interfere with the top side. And also all the connections get soldered on the other side. So we have uh, ideal mounting positions. The potentiometers are actually our mounting points for this device, for this PCB. And I want to make multiple different um, designs depending on the effect that all adhere to the same standard. So they have their two, uh, they have the in and outputs on the same places and have the potentiometers in the same places. You can just swap them in inside your case and make whatever you want in effects combinations. That could be pretty interesting. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. So I told you I want to be able to exchange tubes, use different tubes at different sections of my build. And I've based the design around a very common type of tube for Europe and America. So everybody around the world can take advantage of the design because tubes can be a regional thing. I've based it on this kind of tube that is readily available even today as new old stock or even new. It has nine pins. This is the ECC83. This one was made in West Germany. I also have an ECC82 that was made in East Germany before that wall thing got broken down. And I've also have an American 12AU7. And all of these tubes are interchangeably pin wise. They have different characteristics. They sound different. They have a different mode of amplification. This, for example, is a lot more harsh than the ECC82. So I can experiment around with them, but I can just plug different tubes in and they will work. Not all tubes have the same pinout. You have to be aware of that. Always double, triple check because sometimes even local variants or variants that were, that were made later or by a different manufacturer that, but have the same uh, code on them could be different. 
The PCBs are now in production and we can get on to designing the case in FreeCAD and lasering it out out of particle board. This is basically the backside of an old cabinet. I have chosen this very distinct minty kind of turquoise color because it reminds me of the cars of the 50s and this tube amp basically is 50s tech. So I think that would fit. Also the design is completely restricted to 9 volts because I can't really trust my uh, PSUs that I have in my junk drawer and I don't want to risk overvolting the tubes. I add a voltage regulator to any single one of the PCBs just to make sure that it runs on exactly 9 volt. Also stable voltage sources are very good for the performance of tubes. You don't want to have big spikes. They are not as resilient as modern transistors. So now with my design completed and fitted into a box I can now take advantage of my PCB design and just wiggle out the tubes and put another one in its place. So I put the American 12AU7, also the 12AX7 would fit in the middle position and put the German Siemens ECC83 on the first position. Easy as that. And these output jacks are always connected to their respective tubes and they are cascaded. Also these uh, jacks have switches in them so if I put my output plug in the first one only the first tube gets the signal I hear only the distortion from the first tube. If I put it in the second one I get these two tubes. If I put it in the third one I get all three tubes and I can individually control them and also I can change their positions. So that should give me a ton of options. Also this foot switch allows me to turn the effect on and off. Off means the signal is just bypassed through all of these outputs. So no matter which one I plug in, they will always get the clean signal if I deactivate the tube. I don't get a signal output from my device and I've taken a look into KiCad and turns out, see that line, I forgot to make that connection and that curiously is the output connection. Uh, yeah, so we have to make a little botch here to correct that. I have to say it produces a low bypass so the highs are not very prevalent. It's more like for rhythm guitars so keep that in mind. Also I haven't played in a long time and I have never been a good guitar player so Please excuse it, I hope you get an impression on how tubes sound or how this project sounds. For obvious content ID reasons, I will only play some copyright free music that I make up on the spot or some riffs that I happen to come to my mind and they are pretty not close to the real thing. So if you happen to know some of these riffs, you're a legend and post them in the comments. first one. Now that we know how it sounds with the old radio, we have to plug it into a modern transistor amp 
and I'm especially interested in how this adds to the already distorted sound of the lead and warp channel. But I expect I can get a pretty brutal sound even on the crunch channel, which is kind of simulating an overdriven tube amp. And now we have the full, dist uh, the full distortion of the tubes again. Just playing around with the dials so you can hear a bit of a difference. It's not that big. Oh, it let it stream. To recap, technically, these are three tube amps put in series and they are all overdriven at a point when they will distort. With three stages, I get three times the gain, I get three times the amplification and not quite three times the distortion because I discovered that depending on the configuration that I use with my tubes, the signal gets cleaner again. Some of these tubes seem to have the opposite effect. <laughs> So they clean up the signal a little bit, but also the GDR made one, the East German tube, seems to have uh, microphonic issues, meaning it picks up signals from the other tube and it gives it a hall effect, which is actually kind of cool. Whoa, playing guitar after so many years is pretty exhausting. Also, yeah, I'm still bad, <laughs> but I can make stuff like this. If you happen to know somebody, maybe on YouTube, that is much more capable of making this thing sing, then post it in the comments on element14.com and let me know who I should send that to. And should we make more of these effects pedals? Are you interested in that? Let me know. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me. <laughs>